When I'm teaching, I really want my students to engage. As you may have noticed, one way I try to do this is through adding the occasional bad joke here or there. If they're laughing, it means they're learning, right? Here's a video lecture where I was talking about the problems with some goals. I was talking about how goals led to bad consequences for a team climbing Mount Everest. Nature came along and sealed their tent. Then I started talking about how incentives can go awry. This young lady decided to sue her employer because her boss at Hooters offered her a Toyota for winning the sales competition, only for her to be given a Toyota. I know these jokes are terrible, but it helps with engagement, right? Maybe because at least students might find it more enjoyable to watch the lectures or come to my classes. The jokes might make these videos more fun to watch, but while students probably remember the bad jokes, I don't know if they really remember the key points. If students are enjoying classes but not learning anything, then I'm really feeling more like I'm doing bad stand-up routine than anything else. The problem is that the irrelevant information directs our attention away from what really matters. This is called the coherence effect or the seductive detail effect. Basically, our brains are attracted to novel or interesting information. And sometimes that means students focus more on that information rather than the important stuff they need to learn. So while students could remember that the waitress got a Toyota, they couldn't remember the ideas around incentivizing behavior, which was the whole point. Adding irrelevant information has been consistently shown to impair student learning. A meta-analysis of almost 40 studies found that adding irrelevant information hurts retention with, and I quote, a highly significant effect with a small to medium effect size. This effect was even bigger when trying to get students to transfer the information to similar tasks. This doesn't just apply to jokes and stories, but to the irrelevant information we put on slides as well. Take a look at this graph and try to figure out what it's trying to say. It's hard, right? Are Europeans better or worse with positive self-talk? The more irrelevant graphics or text on the screen, the more things that can distract students from what's important. All this extra information fills up our cognitive load and makes it harder for students to understand. So let's get rid of the dots and reduce the number of redundant words. If you take away all the irrelevant information, the important stuff becomes clearer. It's much easier to see that people from Asian cultures do better at darts with more negative self-talk. Now, some students could have handled the complex graph and some could follow the key points and the stories. But in general, we overestimate the complexity that students can handle. Remember the curse of knowledge. It's easier to go from simple to complex than the other way around. Even if I think it looks good or I think it's a good story, I need to remind myself that irrelevant information is a great way to hurt students learning. Now the first time I told that Toyota story, I actually did it even more poorly. I put the whole newspaper clipping up with Jody and Yoda and text at the bottom. Even my irrelevant story had irrelevant information. I thought I was giving the audience the choice to either read or to listen. Instead, what I was actually doing is clogging up their cognitive architecture. By that, I mean our brains basically process two channels, one for the words that we hear and one for the things that we see. When putting words on a slide at the same time as discussing something, the verbal pathway gets overloaded with my voice and the words. Our brains can cope with one thing to hear and one thing to see at a time, but overload any of the channels and learning will drop. This means that you can also cut the words off a slide when you're already presenting graphics. Doing so means that each pathway is only getting one stream of information. Think of it like the sounds and the visuals of a movie. Our brain really likes visuals and sound when they're in sync, but shift them out of sync or try to listen to a conversation at the same time as the movie and it's really uncomfortable. This is called the modality effect. When there's already a graph, picture or diagram, then cut the words and explain using your voice. A meta-analysis of 43 studies found a large effect in favor of hearing explanations alongside graphics, rather than reading explanations alongside graphics. This was particularly strong when the content was not self-paced, like when we teach in class. So the scissors principle says to cut two things. Cut the words on the slide that explain any graphics, and cut any irrelevant information that doesn't focus on the key points. Apply these scissors and soon enough, you'll be a cut above the rest. What? Can't help it.